just takes a few seconds because it's delayed by a few minutes uh, mm. behind. Then I have to mute the other one, otherwise <laughs> you double hear yourself 30 seconds later. Um, Okay. All right, now it's done. And uh, I'm going to share screen here. And it go uh, here. That's what I'm going to Some other guys may come in a minute. Look. I don't see anything else yet. So there is no. So I hope these guys are there. Um, okay, uh, so let me start uh, uh, now. Um, uh, I would like to welcome everybody back to the online Spice and Spin Plus X uh, seminar series uh, that I organize here in the Spin Phenomenon Interdisciplinary Center, uh, together with Angela Wittmann here in Mainz and Karen Ebershaw City now in Duisburg, and in collaboration with the Spin Plus X Collaborative Research Center led by Martina Schliemann and Burka Hillebrands in uh, Kaisers Labs and, and Matthias Chloe in Mainz. As you know, this is a Zoom webinar format, uh, meaning that you will see the speaker, uh, but you can always ask your questions in the chat or the Q&A, and you will be promoted to the panelist and to us to interact directly with the speaker. And uh, please be informed that uh, we have, of course, things are scheduled at 3 p.m. every Wednesday, except when we have other workshops. Uh, for this, there will be something coming up pretty soon. Uh, once uh, of three workshops, in particularly of the uh, of the center, uh, are coming up at the end of the month, and also in the middle of June, July. I uh, also wanted to advertise uh, the spin mechanics uh, seven, which will happen in the middle of August, uh, where we are actually having a break, uh, a brief uh, hiatus here in the seminar series to have a summer break. Uh, as well as I wanted to advertise um, an upcoming uh, conference in October, uh, a McNeffy uh, conference, particularly for students. It's actually a workshop uh, with lectures uh, for juniors uh, in Crete uh, in the middle of October, which would be a nice way to get away from the gray area on the cold of, of Mainz and Prague, uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, so with this, uh, let me uh, just uh, introduce briefly uh, Helena Rajklova, uh, she is uh, actually will be leading uh, this uh, junior research group leaders workshop uh, here in Mainz in July. She's a research leader at the Institute of Physics, a junior research leader at the Institute of Physics of the Czech Academy of Sciences, uh, and an Eleanor uh, Treft professor at the Institute of Solid State Physics at TU Dresden. Uh, she got her PhD in 2016 uh, in Prague and has had several awards. Uh, one of them is very nice of APS of Stanley Reverie uh, recently this year. Uh, she obtained recently to lead her own regional group uh, a DIRC uh, DFG growing projects and the uh, Christine Nozel Volhar Fellowships uh, uh, as well as has been to, prior to this uh, during her uh, PhD uh, Fulbright Fellow uh, visiting Ohio State. Uh, she works on coupling of spin charts and heating materials uh, that have non spin uh, textures and the materials that have uh, topology, uh, both in one structure and uh, sometimes also shown in real space. So, with this short introduction, I will ask uh, please Helena to go ahead and share your uh, yes. talk mm -hmm. at, uh, and start whenever you like, and I'll mute myself here uh, to give mm -hmm. you. So share the screen. Okay. Um, okay. I think you can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Uh, just me. Yeah. Thank you. So thank uh, thank you, Jairo, uh, a lot for the introduction and for the opportunity to um, present our work. Um, as Jairo said, I'm Helena Reichlova from the Institute of Physics in Prague and uh, Institute of Solid State Physics in Dresden. And today I will speak about the spontaneous anomalous hall responses and ultramagnetism explored in Mangan Telluride and Mangan 5 Silicon Sea. This is work which was done in a broad collaboration between the University in Dresden, the Czech Academy of Sciences, the University in Mainz, University in Constance, uh, uh, Sinam in Marseille, Spintech in Grenoble, 
uh, and Matfis in, in Prague and Charles University. And also a lot of people um, work together. So the theoretical framework uh, was developed by Libor Schmeichel, Tomáš Junkert, Chajo Sinova. And we had uh, uh, many experimental uh, collaborators, which we worked together on the sample fabrication, uh, characterization device, fabrication, and uh, uh, the measurement itself. So let me uh, briefly um, take you through the outline of my talk. Um, first, I will um, uh, discuss the, the magnetically ordered materials, the necessary minimum for, for, for our work here. And then I will explain a bit about uh, the recent or uh, the knowledge which is available about the anomalous Hall effect, which is our tool to, to study the materials, um, uh, which I will present in the large part of the talk. Um, these are, this is the semiconducting uh, mangan telluride and anomalous Hall effect in the uh, spin D wave candidate mangan 5 silicon 3. And then I will just uh, uh, conclude um, in the last part of the talk. Um, so magnetically ordered materials, um, uh, first thing which comes to our mind are probably uh, the ferromagnets, uh, which are uh, where the spins are uh, aligned uh, parallel. Let me just uh, use the uh, laser pointer where the spins are ordered uh, parallel to each other and therefore uh, they exhibit uh, net magnetization to outside. The second characteristic feature of, of ferromagnets is the exchange splitting in the electronic bands. The, the uh, spin up and spin down have um, in the simple ferromagnet isotropic splitting. And the time reversal symmetry is broken into the band structure, which means that uh, for energy of opposite k vector and opposite spin is not equal. These materials are industry favorite. Um, they are used either for um, permanent uh, magnet application or, for example, for the GMR and magnetic resistance, uh, which um, in short is based on uh, two ferromagnetic layers and the resistance is different uh, depending on if they are oriented antiparallel or parallel. This um, effect um, I mentioned because um, it's uh, widely used um, in, in memory elements and uh, um, yes, it's, um, it's until now missing its uh, uh, antiferromagnetic equivalent. The second large uh, uh, group of materials um, are the uh, uh, antiferromagnets. And the antiferromagnets are uh, characterized by the alternate or by the changing spin up and down. Um, um, in the um, in these uh, individual sublattices, um, therefore the total net magnetization is zero. Um, they do not have net magnetization outside, and they also uh, exhibit no spin splitting um, in our um, uh, non-relativistic um, uh, classification, and they have no uh, breaking of the time reversal symmetry in the band structure. Um, one, can, um, one can also see it from here when uh, uh, the spin is flipped, um, uh, then uh, translated uh, by half unit cell, the original unit cell is, is recovered and um, uh, the, the time reversal symmetry is not broken. Despite all these uh, seemingly disadvantages, uh, uh, antiferromagnets are attracting uh, a lot of attention uh, lately. And uh, they also have um, a clear application potential. So one of the things uh, which we like about antiferromagnets, uh, beside all the absence of the stray field and so on, is the speed of the reversal. So that the, they can be reversed uh, uh, faster than the, uh, than the ferromagnetic materials, as was shown, for example, by, by Kamel Olenyi in this uh, publication uh, when uh, the uh, antiferromagnet was switched by, by terahertz pulses. So um, thinking only about collinear materials um, without any spin orbit coupling, one could think that this is exhaustive description um, of, of, uh, of the materials. But in the last couple of years, there was a significant theory effort and based on symmetry arguments, another uh, class of uh, materials uh, was identified, which actually combines the properties of, of uh, antiferromagnets and ferromagnets, which I described before. 
The uh, full classification and all the details uh, can be found in, in work of, of Libor Smekal um, or, for example, on this online uh, a talk of, of Tomasz Jungbert. So let me just uh, um, uh, show the simplest uh, cartoon, the simplest um, uh, core principle of uh, where this new or this uh, additional class of materials comes from. And let's take uh, our uh, simple collinear uh, antiferromagnet where we have uh, uh, two arrows pointing in the opposite direction. And as I uh, said, when we uh, flip the spin and shift it by half unit cell, we recover the original uh, uh, picture. And therefore, we say that the uh, TT uh, symmetry is preserved. In that case, we, however, keep the rest of the uh, non-magnetic atoms as a homogeneous uniform background. And uh, in some materials, by uh, uh, placing and considering the non-magnetic atoms um, as, for example, in these positions, we see that the same exercise um, uh, will not uh, um, give us the same result because when we now flip the arrows uh, and shift it by half unit cell, we do not recover the uh, uh, the same picture, and therefore the time uh, the TT uh, symmetry in that case is broken. And um, this is a pretty fundamental thing because um, uh, when we then look into some uh, real materials. Uh, we see that the uh, local uh, crystal electric field, which is present there because of the non-magnetic atoms, is not connected by the uh, translation how, or inversion, however, by, uh, by a rotation. And uh, uh, together with this opposite spin splitting of these two um, uh, spin uh, sublattices, uh, it has a consequences uh, into the momentum space and um, it uh, uh, demonstrates as a, a, a splitting uh, of the spin, which is alternating. So uh, we can see a clear anisotropic uh, splitting uh, in the full band structure. And it's not only small, it, it can be up to one electron volt. And um, um, here, just the cuts, energy cuts, um, which highlight the anisotropic character and also highlight another um, uh, like, uh, likable feature, which is the, the conservation of the spin. The alternating spin polarization um, uh, uh, in momentum and real space uh, suggested the name um, uh, alter magnetism or alter magnets, which I will use in the following in this talk. Therefore, coming back to our uh, table, we can add here uh, one more class of materials, um, let's call them alter magnets. Uh, which have also the spins uh, oriented um, up and down. The uh, total net magnetization is indeed zero. They are compensated. However, the um, uh, local uh, crystal um, electric field is not connected, uh, is connected by rotation, and it leads to anisotropic spin splitting, um, as, as demonstrated here, and uh, breaking of the time reversal symmetry in the band structure. Similarly to combining uh, uh, these fundamental properties of antiferromagnets and ferromagnets, alter magnets could hopefully also combine the, the application potential and advantages of, of these two classes of materials and uh, therefore exhibit, for example, high speed of, of reversal or uh, as already predicted, um, uh, show a GMR, GMR giant magnet resistance functionality. So being that said, um, I, I said that uh, one of the characteristic feature of this alter magnetic class is the uh, time reversal symmetry breaking in the, uh, in the band structure. And uh, for us, experimentally, is the, the prime tool to study um, uh, time reversal symmetry breaking is the anomalous Hall effect, simply because the effect um, is um, relatively easy to measure. Uh, we can measure it in the single layer, no uh, complicated multi layers or uh, nanolithography is required. And um, uh, let me then um, give an overview of uh, existing knowledge about this effect and uh, put our work into context of, of the previous studies. So the anomalous Hall effect refers to the voltage which is generated uh, perpendicular to uh, electrical current and uh, uh, magnetic order vector. vector. And um, it was observed already a um, long time ago um, uh, by Edwin Hall. 
um, uh, when he realized that uh, uh, ordinary Hall effect um, uh, is having uh, another contribution, or there is another contribution to the Hall voltage, which is somehow proportional to, proportional to the to the net magnetization. And um, um, this uh, empirical relation um, uh, was um, uh, simply discussed afterwards for uh, tens of years uh, to, to find the, the exact origin. And uh, one of the um, important uh, results of this um, uh, interesting discussion was that there are other contributions to the anomalous Hall effect, um, which are um, uh, sort of intrinsic contributions arising from uh, the character of the, of the band structure itself of a perfect crystal. And what is important for, for us, um, it, uh, it does not scale this magnetization. It does not apply imply that the net magnetization needs to be present. And uh, um, uh, anomalous Hall effect was consequently observed uh, for example, in a spin liquid candidate in uh, 2014, it was predicted for non collinear magnets. And uh, 2015, uh, a milestone experiments, um, anomalous Hall effect was confirmed in, in a mangan 3 tin and mangan 3 germanium in the groups of uh, Claudia Fersel and Satoruna Katsui. And uh, at that time, it was still believed that the collinear magnets um, uh, are simply not allowed to exhibit any anomalous Hall effect uh, for the reasons which I discussed uh, before, that um, uh, they, they do not allow uh, simply for, for the time reversal breaking in the band structure. Um, this was, however, revisited in 2020 when the anomalous Hall effect was predicted to be present in the collinear alter magnet. And uh, one year later, it was also experimentally reported in ruthenium dioxide. Ruthenium dioxide is, uh, is a pioneer uh, alter magnet. It's uh, uh, widely studied, and I will mention it once more. However, uh, one um, disadvantage, for example, here is that the anomalous Hall effect, which is observed in the uh, ruthenium dioxide, it does not have the spontaneous character. Spontaneous anomalous Hall effect um, uh, refers to the presence of the anomalous Hall effect also in the absence of the uh, magnetic external magnetic field. And here is where um, our uh, talk um, uh, basically starts. And um, this is the experimental observation of the anomalous Hall effect in uh, two materials, mangan 5 silicon 3 and mangan telluride. Let me therefore start with uh, mangan telluride. Uh... Uh, mangan telluride is a well-known material. It's a semiconductor with a gap of 1.4 electron volts. And our samples were grown by, by Ginter Springholz on indium phosphates, um, MBE grown. And uh, 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 manganese telluride has these uh, manganese hexagonal uh, planes and the uh, uh, tellurium atoms in the non-central symmetric positions. And this is the conventional way how to look into the uh, uh, unit cell. However, when we uh, look from different perspective, um, we see the two uh, manganese sublattices surrounded by the tellurium cages. And we see that these cannot be connected uh, uh, by any translation on inversion. Instead, they are connected by the rotation and half unit cell uh, translation. Together with the uh, absence of a net magnetic moment, we can see a uh, uh, magnetization measured in the Mangantelluride films. Um, uh, this is uh, what uh, makes this material uh, alter magnet. Uh, when looking into, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, when looking into uh, uh, band structure calculations, the spin uh, up and down is uh, degenerate along the uh, high symmetric directions. However, going away uh, from this, uh, for example, between gamma and L, we see that the splitting, the spin splitting is clearly present and alternating. Uh, also, the anomalous Hall effect, when it's theoretically calculated, it's allowed. And um, this brings me to the measurement itself. So what we did, uh, we prepared uh, Hall bars of mangan telluride. Uh, the current is applied in the channel of the Hall bar and longitudinal and transversal voltage is measured. The longitudinal measurement shown here, it uh, uh, exhibits um, AMR, an isotropic magnetoresistance, uh, well-known effect, nothing surprising. 
Um, however, when uh, we look at the uh, transversal signal, on the first look, uh, it might uh, look dominated by, by this ordinary uh, hole effect. And uh, already here, one can see that um, uh, there is some uh, sort of splitting that it's not uh, only the ordinary Hall effect which is present. And when the uh, linear background is subtracted, um, a clear, uh, saturated, and spontaneous signal uh, remains. So, what is happening here? Uh, the out of plane Hall vector is uh, uh, linked to this in plane uh, manganese moments of the mangan telluride. And uh, with the external magnetic field, we are capable to reverse the, the, the whole vector and uh, therefore uh, measure this anomalous whole effect. The important uh, point is that uh, the out of plane, the component of the out of plane external field is the important one because we see that, for example, sweeping uh, uh, along the 30 degrees and along the minus 30 degrees which in principle has the same projection of the magnetic field into the in-plane direction and opposite uh, to the out-of-plane direction, indeed gives the opposite uh, anomalous hole effect, uh, showing that this is the out-of-plane component of the magnetic uh, external magnetic field, which matters. So now the, um, these two spontaneous um, uh, signals, in principle, correspond to this cartoonish picture. Um, uh, where once we have oriented the arrows like that and once like that. And now the question is um, uh, how the reversal uh, could in principle happen? Because um, uh, without considering the non-magnetic uh, atoms, we would say that these two uh, orientations in external magnetic field, they will both cant up and there will be no uh, preference in energy. There will be energetically equivalent. However, by considering also the, the non-magnetic atoms, uh, uh, we can uh, um, uh, say that, for example, this uh, uh, orientation uh, has uh, lower energy than uh, this orientation. And for the opposite polarity of the external magnetic field, the situation reverses, and this has a higher energy compared to this orientation. And uh, um, assuming that, uh, we can also understand our hysteresis, our um, hysteretic and spontaneous behavior. Um, when we polarize or when we apply high magnetic field uh, of three Tesla, uh, the, the spins are uh, canting in one direction. Then we reduce the magnetic field to zero. The, the spins are uh, in this orientation. We reverse the polarity. We apply high magnetic field in the opposite direction. The spins are originally pointing in this direction until the moment that they uh, can flip to the energetically more preferred uh, version, more preferred orientation which is um, marked by this arrow. And then sweeping with the magnetic field back to zero, we are in our uh, uh, second spontaneous uh, state. I just want to highlight that the counting of the moments is heavily exaggerated and that the effect is present also in the zero magnetic field. Um, here I show like one example of the magnetization uh, loop um, measured on the Mankan uh, telluride sample. Uh, we have uh, defined a value of the saturated anomalous Hall effect. This is the value uh, with applied uh, magnetic field, but also the spontaneous, which is present in zero magnetic field. And uh, when looking at the temperature dependency, we see that both behave similarly. And exactly as expected, they are uh, absent in the paramagnetic state. Uh, the nail temperature of mangan telluride is around uh, uh, 300K. Uh, the same temperature where also the, the magneto resistance disappears. So this was our um, first um, relatively well-known material, which we studied, mangan telluride semiconductor. And in the second part of the talk, I would like to speak about um, uh, mangan uh, 5 silicon 3, uh, which is not so well uh, known. Uh, it was studied in a uh, uh, bulk and pore crystalline form. And um, uh, it has actually very um, nice uh, properties for us experimentalists because it can be tuned from the paramagnetic phase into, uh, this is what was reported in the bulk, into a uh, collinear uh, antiferromagnetic phase and in the low temperature non-collinear uh, antiferromagnetic phase. 
This was studied by, for example, by Christoph Sirges or Jane Brown. Um, and here I uh, show what was the spin arrangement found uh, by, by neutron diffraction. Um, in uh, the polycrystalline films, mm, uh, uh, the focus was on the low uh, uh, magnetic, low temperature magnetic phase. And in the low temperature magnetic phase, um, uh, a nice uh, topological Hall effect was observed, which, uh, which is uh, somehow correlated to this uh, non collinear character of the, of the spin arrangement. And um, um, uh, it's shown here and it's present until the um, 60 Kelvin um, uh, when it disappears, uh, when it disappears. Uh, similar transitions were confirmed by the by the bulk measurements um, uh, uh, to be approximately between 50 and, and 100 or 70 and 100 K. And now uh, we prepared uh, the Mangan 5 silicon 3 uh, by MBE um, and we grew the materials uh, on a silicon 111 substrate which has the hexagonal pattern and it stabilizes the mangan 5 uh, silicon 3 layers uh, into this uh, hexagonal shape. This is actually very important and I will discuss it now in uh, more details because as you will see, um, uh, this uh, epitaxial con constraints in the end led to uh, increase of the nail temperature and more importantly to the change of the symmetry which now allows for the alter magnetism. The films were grown um, in Marseille by, by Ismaela Conta and Lisa Miches in, in very high quality. Um, and uh, um, we kind of suspected that uh, the hexagonal, uh, uh, hexagonal pattern is stabilized in the full temperature range. However, we also confirmed that by uh, synchrotron measurements. Uh, uh, what I show here uh, is the temperature dependence of the lattice parameters uh, of the bulk uh, 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 bulk mangan 5 silicon 3 as reported by Jane Brown. And here is the C uh, lattice parameter. This is uh, uh, showing the uh, transition at the second now temperature. Uh, here is the uh, AB uh, uh, lattice parameter. So the bulk uh, films are uh, hexagonal at, in the paramagnetic phase. Then uh, the first uh, uh, transition is from the hexagonal to the orthorhombic. And then the low uh, temperature phase is, is monoclinic. And all these transitions can be seen in the A and B uh, lattice parameters of the bulk measurements. Uh, the red dots are now our thin films. The C uh, lattice parameter uh, exhibits similar change uh, because this is the C direction, which is not constrained by the silicon substrate. However, the A, B uh, lattice parameter does not have the freedom to move because it's uh, simply stabilized by the, the, the hexagonal uh, pattern from the silicons. And uh, therefore the, um, uh, therefore, our films are hexagonal in the full temperature range. Um, uh, as I mentioned, that the strain stabilization uh, also uh, uh, led to the increase of the now temperature. Um, uh, we fabricated um, uh, bars uh, where we measured the longitudinal transversal voltage. And here I show the, uh, the longitudinal resistivity, which similar to the uh, bulk um, has the similar value as a bulk and similar to bulk, it uh, shows two um, bumps or two um, uh, moments when it uh, indicates the, the phase transition. And uh, the first phase, the low temperature phase transition uh, seems to be not strongly changed. However, the second phase transition to the paramagnetic state seems to be shifted uh, up to um, 240 Kelvin approximately. The, these films were also studied by uh, magnetometry and um, uh, we can see that our uh, magnetization uh, curves here do not show any clear measurable um, uh, signal within our uh, resolution and experimental capabilities. Um, it's not is dominated by the silicon uh, uh, sub silicon substrate and uh, not strongly changing to its temperature. And the estimate uh, which we could uh, give given our experimental error is that uh, the moment is less than 0.001 bore magneton per manganese. 
This is in contrast to the um, to the uh, transport measurements uh, which we performed. Uh, this is the whole signal, the uh, transversal measurement as a function of the out of plane magnetic field sweep. And uh, we can observe a clear, robust uh, anomalous hole effect uh, present in the full uh, temperature range when the samples are magnetically ordered and is absent uh, at uh, room temperature where the sample is uh, paramagnetic. So the clear spontaneous anomalous hole signal uh, um, shows uh, the breaking of the time reversal symmetry in the band structure. Now I will look into it in more details. First thing, which is uh, possible to see that it's not um, a square loop, uh, or at least in the low temperature, there is additional feature. And um, uh, to decouple or um, decompose our data, we have to look how the raw data actually look. So the blue is as measured uh, the raw data. We subtract the linear background. And uh, from this is the orange line. And from that, we separate our data to the uh, anomalous whole like part. And uh, the difference between the orange and the uh, green, uh, uh, we call a uh, topological whole contribution, which we believe arises from the non collinear uh, uh, order. Uh, when we extract the, this topological uh, contribution and we plot it against uh, temperature, uh, we see that it's present uh, in the low temperature magnetic phase. Um, it has magnitude um, uh, very, very consistent with, with Christoph Sirkes data, and it's uh, uh, completely absent in, uh, in the high temperature magnetic phase. This is in clear contrast to the anomalous hole part, which is present uh, almost unchanged in the full temperature range, and it only disappears in the room temperature paramagnetic phase. When converted into a uh, whole conductivity, uh, uh, we can uh, see that uh, indeed it does not show very clear variation on the uh, magnetic phase transition uh, between the low temperature magnetic and the high temperature magnetic phase. And uh, interestingly, also the coercive field um, is uh, not changed at all uh, on, the, on this phase transition between two magnetic uh, orderings. And both of them, they are absent uh, in the paramagnetic phase. The um, amplitude of the anomalous hole conductivity is between five to 10 Siemens per centimeter. And I will come to that also later. We also measure the longitudinal signal, the magneto resistance. And uh, unlike the anomalous hole effect, which is present in the full uh, temperature range when the sample is magnetically ordered, the magneto resistance is uh, uh, negative and present only in the low temperature, uh, low temperature magnetic phase, the non-collinear uh, low temperature phase, and is basically absent in the, in the high temperature magnetic phase, as can be illustrated here. And this further uh, supports the, the coplanar order in the high temperature magnetic ordered phase, uh, again, consistent with, uh, with the previous literature. So let me now uh, uh, explain uh, where we think that the signal actually comes from. Uh, I showed you the experimental data that uh, we confirmed the hexagonal unit cell in the full temperature range. We confirmed the vanishing magnetization. Um, uh, we confirmed the spontaneous time reversal symmetry breaking by our uh, anomalous hole measurements. And we believe that uh, the high temperature magnetic phase is uh, uh, unlikely non complanar This is our unit cell with uh, two different uh, manganese, um, two different uh, manganese uh, positions. And interestingly, only the four of them are uh, ordered. Uh, only these four of them are ordered um, as uh, confirmed by the bulk neutron uh, measurements. And now um, um, uh, using the data from Michael Gottschild, for example, uh, we uh, can uh, point here where in this um, uh, crystal, in this uh, unit cell, the, the spins are pointing. So um, the blue is representing the arrow pointing in this direction. The red is representing the arrow in this direction. 
And because of the transition from the paramagnetic hexagonal to the, to the higher temperature orthorhombic um, uh, cell, the, the bulk uh, uh, samples exhibit a doubling of the magnetic unit cell. Uh, this, this can be seen here that uh, this uh, uh, cell is different than this one. This also leads to the fact that uh, one can uh, imagine that reversing this pin uh, uh, and this pin and shifting it by um, a half unit cell uh, will reproduce the same original picture. And therefore the system in the bulk has the TT symmetry uh, present. This might be also the reason why in the bulk mangan 5 silicon 3 the, the anomalous hole effect was actually not observed. However, looking in our thin films, we, uh, uh, we showed that the uh, um, hexagonal unit cell is stabilized. And there is a reason that the magnetic uh, ordering can be also different. And in that particular ordering, the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, by reversing the spins here, and we cannot find any translational inversion operation which would reproduce the original cell. So therefore the TT symmetry is broken. Now, when we uh, consider this is, this is our films, this is our uh, structure, and we uh, know that the, um, uh, the system is compensated, we don't have any net magnetic moment. So, uh, and we have four ordered manganese. Um, uh, we can find uh, three possible arrangements uh, of, of the uh, spins, uh, which, would, uh, which would be compensated. And uh, uh, only the, this arrangement uh, uh, breaks the time reversal symmetry in the band structure and allows for the anomalous Hall effect. Importantly, this is also the arrangement which is supported by the DFT as the, as the ground state. When the uh, corresponding anomalous Hall effect is calculated, um, uh, we get value five to twenty Siemens per centimeter, which is which is surprisingly a good agreement with the with the experiment. I mentioned that um, uh, this type of measurements, this uh, resulting from this anisotropic uh, spin splitting, uh, is also uh, very sensitive to the crystal quality. Um, this is something which we tested uh, partly uh, um, uh, in our samples. Um, uh, we had uh, on the beginning uh, several samples which we measured in different labs by different people. And uh, uh, on the first look, they, they look a bit different. We had some data which the, or the raw data measured, they showed a clear response. Some, sometimes the response was a bit weaker. Sometimes the, the anomalous whole response was uh, entirely absent. And uh, uh, after we found that it can be uh, actually very well correlated to the uh, epitaxial character of the, of the particular sample. This sample, for example, was um, uh, fully epitaxial. This sample was mixed, uh, having also some uh, spurious phase. And this sample was fully crystalline. We uh, compared uh, systematically several samples um, of um, uh, uh, of uh, different uh, different sample growth uh, batches, and we found that there is some common uh, um, feature between various samples. So all, all of them they exhibit some uh, anomalous hall resistivity, which is absent at uh, high paramagnetic phase. However, the amplitude of the anomalous hall response was um, uh, scattered. And what we found is that uh, it can be um, very well correlated to the, um, to the phase purity. So uh, when we plot the amplitude of the anomalous hall resistivity against the uh, uh, phase purity, the ratio of the mangan-5 silicon-3 and the mangan silicon spurious phase, we observed a clear correlation between these parameters. What can, on the other hand, be not found is any correlation with the uh, small uh, net moment which we are able to, to measure in the squid magnetometer. Very likely that the uh, uh, squid um, signal is not uh, correlated to, to our layers. So uh, until now, I was speaking um, only about the anomalous Hall effect. However, um, I would not want to see the mangan 5 silicon 3 thin films only as another material uh, showing the anomalous Hall effect. But um, uh, we would like to see it more like uh, altermagnetic candidate with all the benefits which, which uh, come with that. 
So we saw the clear um, absence of the net magnetization, clear anomalous hole effect. However, it was also shown that uh, the altar magnetism, um, because of this anisotropic spin splitting, can serve as an excellent source of a, a coherent spin current. This was already tested um, in the ruthenium dioxide uh, a pioneer. Um, these three important uh, papers, they, they show very nicely uh, um, uh, in ruthenium dioxide, uh, the, the, the spin torque experiments. And, um, how does this actually work? Um, uh, let me show it on this simplified cartoon. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the, the splitting of the spin up and down is anisotropic, and uh, when the magnetic, when the electric field is applied, these are um, shifted, and uh, then the um, uh, spin down and spin up uh, current is um, uh, generated. The net current is generated. And uh, the, the, in some, um, uh, there is also non-zero net uh, spin current uh, generated. Similarly, when uh, the electric field is applied along uh, one of the long axis of these ellipses, the, uh, the ellipse uh, of the spin up is off-centered, different than the spin uh, down. So the excess of the spin up here is larger than the excess of the spin down here. And in total, again, there is a net uh, spin current generated uh, per parallel to the, to the electric field. And also, um, um, depending on the direction of the, of the electric field, in which direction is applied. This has naturally many consequences um, as, as the GMR or the spin torques. And um, um, this is a very exciting thing to, to, to explore further. Uh, one more um, analogy or one more uh, discussion point which I would like to mention is that I said that the Fermi surfaces are highly anisotropic. And uh, already in, in this uh, viewpoint, uh, um, relatively long time ago, there was discussed a resemblance between the magnetism and the supraconductivity, uh, uh, where the um, S-wave supraconductor was somehow um, present like an analogy to a simple ferromagnet. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the D-wave supraconductor, which was uh, causing the, the revolution in the superconductivity, um, uh, was having the uh, missing, uh, uh, missing um, analogy in the, in the magnetism uh, here called uh, exotic magnet. And um, uh, here one can already see some uh, level of resemblance to the, to the energy cuts, which I was showing from the beginning. Uh, uh, that here our uh, spin up and spin down anisotropic splitting could be the, the, the missing, uh, missing spin D wave uh, magnetic equivalent. And indeed, when uh, uh, the Fermi surfaces, uh, the spin polarized Fermi surfaces of our Mangan 5 are calculated, they show exactly these uh, switching of the spin up and spin down uh, in, the, in these uh, Fermi surfaces and they could be the um, um, missing equivalent. Following the analogy again, one would hope that the similar revolution which the D-wave superconductors meant for superconductivity, this anisotropic uh, spin-splitted uh, Fermi surfaces could bring also uh, many new phenomena into the magnetism. Last uh, point which um, I would like to mention is that uh, uh, Mangan uh, 5 silicon 3 uh, can serve like a perfect example that um, the uh, altar magnets um, can open much broader pool of, of uh, materials. They can be uh, light element, abundant, non-toxic. They can also be um, they can also be practical from the perspective of uh, inexpensive and and, and sustainable. Uh, given the, the, the volatility of, of certain elements, um, um, th this might be also advantage uh, from this uh, little bit non-scientific perspective. This brings me to the outlook. Um, the, um, for, as I mentioned, the, the altar magnets are um, not, not so rare. They are actually rather, uh, rather common. 
And uh, there are many new materials and fields which could be connected to the altar magnetism. I already mentioned that the, uh, the semiconductors, there is the case of the mangan telluride, but there is also many altar magnetic insulators, for example, which uh, uh, could broaden the pool of magnetic insulators, which are used, for example, in spilling calotonics, which I personally find very um, exciting. Similarly, I think that the fascinating field of the 2D uh, materials uh, um, uh, can be benefiting from the altar magnetism. We know that some of the Van der Waals uh, materials, for example, all of these are reported to be, to be antiferromagnets. And uh, uh, although some of them might not fulfill the, the outer magnetic symmetry, we know that uh, by uh, reducing the dimension or by strain, the, the symmetry can be changed. So all this, um, uh, again, could bring like very uh, interesting results. And um, this um, uh, brings me to the um, conclusion. So I uh, um, showed you that the spontaneous anomalous Hall effect uh, um, uh, can arise from altar magnetism also in um, collinear uh, magnets. And uh, I demonstrated it on the two uh, examples. One of them was well-known mangan telluride um, uh, altar magnet where the uh, breaking of the time reversal symmetry in the band structure was due to the local crystal field of the tellurium uh, cages. And uh, the second uh, candidate which I uh, presented was the mangan 5 silicon treatment films, where the, the multi-sublattice multi spin splitting uh, 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 is responsible for the anomalous hole uh, response. With that, um, I would like to acknowledge to, uh, to all uh, our colleagues which, with whom we work together. And here I just put an incomplete list of literature. These two works are um, uh, shown here, uh, but there is a lot of uh, exciting theory papers and uh, many important experiments and it's growing basically every week. So thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Helena. <laughs> Applause from the audience. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's see. Um, please, uh, uh, for the uh, for the audience, let's. Uh, I'm going to start putting ego here. So as as you come up to the uh, promote in there, I think Igor will rejoin us in a second and ask the question. Uh, Igor, can you go ahead and ask your question, please? Uh, unmute yourself. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> when you promote me to panelist, it takes some time. It for takes some time, yeah. I'm going to start with yeah. that as you well. Know so first of all, uh, thank Helen. I believe you never met before for this cute <laughs> and nice talk. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, and this one question. So basically, you are describing manipulating the anti-ferromagnetic or ultramagnetic domains in the same way as we manipulate ferromagnetic domains essentially, capitalizing on the fact that there is some, uh, some residual weak ferromagnetic component. Uh, what makes me, um, this makes me think about uh, an important difference. In ferromagnets, uh, there, is a, um, there is energy um, stimulus to, to actually form domain structure, even if you start with a single domain. Mm -hmm. That's why you need strong magnetic field. But if you have anti-ferromagnetic domains, then the uh, stray fields are very short range. So it's probably not um, mm, that difficult to um, prepare a single domain sample and then keep it this way. Uh, and in that sense, my, uh, in that connection, my question is, did you try to um, work with uh, field cooling, so, sort of like... Uh, mm, taking small field, not necessarily large enough, like in routinium, you needed very large magnetic field, for instance, but um, well, in routinium, you don't have um, initially the right orientation. So that's a, not a good example, but suppose that you have naturally the correct easy axis um, and you only need to eliminate domain structure. Can you just do field cooling or even annealing in um, small yeah. field? Yes, the field cooling we definitely can do, and this is what we also do, but experimentally field cooling is not very, um, yeah, it's, you can of course help yourself a bit uh, with the field cooling, and this is what we commonly do, but uh, experimentally it's not very favorable, right, because you have to always field cool it in different direction, which takes time, so you cannot just reverse it by the field cooling, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, and Nimal, uh... 
Kimi there, please go ahead and uh, Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful talk. Um, I have a quick question about this uh, manifest telluride. So it was uh, especially on thin films, right? So um, uh, if you can go back to uh, uh, the slide, uh, I would appreciate where you saw the Hall effect, minimalist Hall effect. Okay, almost there, almost there. Yeah, for example, here or yeah. So, I, so this, um, so no, in the in the resistivity, maybe previous slide. Yeah, I, I, I was wondering, um, you know, um, you you talked about this sample quality in uh, the other sample. Uh, did you uh, test uh, the variation among different batches of samples here in this? Uh, no, actually, no. With this material, we didn't test different quality of uh, of uh, samples. Um, here, we don't have so much. With the mangan five silicon three, we basically report uh, a new magnetic phase in the thin films in some sense, right? That it's different from the bulk. So we feel much more responsible for testing it by via all possible ways that uh, our effect comes where we think it comes from, you know. With the mangan telluride, we feel much more confident that the magnetic and structural um, characterization was already done many times. Um, yes, so the, there we didn't uh, do so much effort into uh, measuring different quality of samples. One another thing, is there, is it possible, I mean, I'm, I'm a bulk person, I don't know much about thin films. Is there any, um, uh, any reason to think about that maybe some effect from the um, substrate that you're using to grow these films? Yes, the substrate is insulating, right? So it would be um, the substrate is insulating material. So you would not pick up uh, the voltage from the substrate or you mean some, prop, but it's paramagnetic some strain or, 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 or something that- yeah, yeah, the strain indeed, right? This is what we think that the strain is uh, causing the changes in our mangan five, the strain induced uh, from the substrate, but- uh, not to the measured voltage, right? Uh, sure, sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Great. Can you uh, unmute yourself and ask a question, please? Hi, Helena. It's a wonderful talk. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I have a um, couple of uh, curiosity questions. So my first question is that, uh, do we expect any crystal axis dependent, uh, dependence of anomalous Hall conductivity? For example, if you run current along different crystal axis, uh, do you see different uh, sign or magnitude of anomalous Hall conductivity for both these materials? Yes, actually we we do expect difference, but we do not uh, in this particular two systems we do not see clear. Um, we, we might see something which we are trying to quantify, but it's not uh, some striking difference currently. So uh, with the Mangantel right, we had uh, two different orientations and it, uh, uh, it was uh, very similar. With the Mangan 5 Silicon 3, um, uh, with the colleagues, um, uh, we look, we see some sort of uh, difference, but we are in the process of trying to understand where it actually comes from, yeah. Okay. Uh, my second point is that, uh, second question is, uh, so uh, three, three, four years back, I have seen one paper from uh, Roland uh, Kawakami from Ohio State. So he showed that some 2D uh, magnets only uh, uh, happening uh, uh, the, uh, on the top. Okay, so I'm wondering if you have some sort of uh, uncompensated moments on the top, uh, which is very small, that you cannot uh, measure uh, by doing squid measurements, whether mm -hmm. that sort of thing is possible giving rise to anomalous Hall effect. Yeah, well, this would be very, um, so you mean that there is some sort of uncompensated surface on top, which is- Yes, so more... which is like, which is like magnet. Mm -hmm. For example, that can be uh, eliminated if there is uh, a thickness dependence. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe mm -hmm. uh, if it is, um, uh, from un un uncompensated atoms, then uh, if you increase the thickness, that will go down. Yes, yes, I, I completely like see where you point. Yeah. Uh, however, I have to be completely honest that with the Mangan 5 changing the thickness, uh, you mm -hmm. might also change other parameters, you know. Okay, so, okay. Mm -hmm. Although it would yeah. be now easy to say, yes, uh, we can eliminate it. I think that it would not be 100% honest, uh, yeah. Okay, my th third and last question is, uh, yeah, uh, in this slide, so uh, 
you showed uh, the uh, the longitudinal resistivity variation and also the transverse so where is the planar hall resistivity so i right now cannot compare the anomalous hall resistivity versus planar hall resistivity maybe uh, that is um, good to know yeah the planar hall like we, we believe that we are uh, all the time like the projection to the uh, current is the all the time parallel to the current right so you would not expect the planar hall uh, contribution or what this so, is what uh, I would expect uh, we may see the way uh, we see it the for the uh, AMR sort of thing uh, that you showed for yes. uh, while the magnet rotates, uh, we'll have different projections, so it will pick up okay. some things. Yeah, this this might be a little bit confusing because we we do not rotate; we just sweep under different angle, uh, and the angle is kind of pointed up here, you know that you uh, sweep uh, under different- Yeah, I understand that what I mean actually. So when we rotate, the, sorry, when we sweep the field uh, near the cohesive field, uh, so spins will reorient. And in that case, uh, in that area, we'll have a, a non-collinear uh, sort of structure that will give rise both AMR and PEG. So you can see the AMR signal that I see here, that AMR is saturating, uh, kind of saturating after six Tesla. Okay, but this would be even in magnetic field, or you mean yeah, just yeah. like that there is some small- Yeah, 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 the yeah both, okay, yeah. so the even part, yes, this yeah, is yeah. even, uh, I mean, yes, so this could be there, but uh, it would not have this odd symmetry, right? Which we yeah, see. yeah, absolutely, I agree, yeah, but uh, I was just trying to understand how much, uh, what is the percentage of that even uh, component and the odd component. Okay, that's a good point. I think that it's dominated yeah. by the odd one, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, in general, it's a great talk and congratulations. You did uh, very nicely and uh, yeah, it's very interesting and impressive. Thank you for your question. Thank you. This was nice. Uh, so Angela uh, Walker, can you ask a question, please? And read yourself, yeah. Hello, Helena. Great, great talk. I had a question about this, the idea of the sample quality really being I'll, I'll call it an issue. <laughs> so once you saw that, was it possible to then fine tune the growth so that there were more good, you know, air quotes, samples produced? Uh, yeah, well, I think that this is, uh, this would be more a question of full talk of, of Liza and uh, Ismaila, who did really a lot of effort to know what is the sweet spot when the good sample grows. But uh, uh, before that, uh, we also uh, find out that when you try to, for example, grow it thicker, then we typically use our uh, 60 nanometers. And once you start to grow it thicker, you inevitably uh, introduce also some spurious phase. And therefore, the thing which for us started like a thickness theory ended up as a um, phase purity theory. Did it help, uh, Angela? Did it help? Yes, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Let's go next to Gotz uh, Uri. Uh, can you? Uh, yes. Um, thank you. Uh, thanks for this clear and nice talk. Um, I have a very simple or two simple questions. One is uh, in this manganese telluride, um, you emphasize it's a semiconductor. So these charges that you're now uh, observing, um, are they uh, thermally excited or is there doping? Um, what uh, What is actually going on? Uh, what do you mean like uh, excited or... Are they simply present because of the final temperature? That's yes, yes, yeah, of course, yes, yeah. So, so, so it's a semiconductor. Pardon me? I didn't. Uh, uh, it's, it's, you're asking whether it's an intrinsic semiconductor. Yes. Yeah, okay. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can find somewhere the the whole loops. It. Um. I hope it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then another question, I mean, you, you emphasize this canting in, in, uh, in this manganese telluride, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the local surroundings of, um, of the spins. Mm, so is it spin orbit coupling, which uh, is at the origin or? No, no, this, this is not spin orbit coupling. This is this, this kind of local crystal electric, electric field, which I was trying to describe on the beginning, uh, that this is really the, uh, the environment of the um, non-magnetic atoms 
forming some sort of local uh, crystal field, which is then uh, causing the difference between these two orientations. Um, and, and what is then at the origin of the coupling of uh, the electric field to this to the spin degree of freedom? Um, what do you mean? What is the so you mean some of the some of the yeah, I think I think he's referring to the spin splitting that you see in the outer magnets. Uh, this well, no, it, it's precisely the, the, the slide that you had with these uh, different cantings. Um, I, I, perhaps I'm simply ask, I'm, I'm too naive, but I, I don't see really why the electric uh, environment has a direct effect on the spin orientation, except if you invoke spin orbit coupling, of course. Yeah, well, I, I kind of imagine it like simply having uh, more energy, that simply the, the energy functional is suddenly having uh, some sort of different uh, uh, value for the, for the two orientations, um, uh, because one considers already the, also the, the, the local crystal electric field there. Maybe I can answer this question. Okay. Okay, all right. Yeah. So... <laughs> there is, yeah, there are two different issues there. So it's no surprise that you are sort of a bit confused. Uh, one is that there is a completely non-relativistic uh, anti-ferromagnetic interaction, which uh, keeps, um, which keeps um, anti-ferromagnetic mutual arrangement, but does not fix the direction of the anti-ferromagnetic <laughs> moments in any direction. Now, uh, Depending on where this, on what is this direction, there could be or could not be anomalous Hall effect. Now, in order to um, to manipulate that, if you if you include spin orbit coupling to this arrangement, then you are getting a very small equilibrium canting with very small um, ferromagnetic moment, which is not responsible for the splitting or for the value of the anomalous Hall effect. It's only a handle that they use to rotate these things. Now, uh, obviously, if you apply magnetic field perpendicular to the um, magnetic vectors, and if you, in absence of spin anisotropy, it's always will be perpendicular, then we'll start canting. It would prevent them from canting is just exchange coupling. Does it clear yeah, it up? Okay, so in essence, you say that there, there is some spin orbit coupling, even though it's a minor effect and just uh, singling out a direction. Yeah, yeah the handle to yeah. move the, um, the domains, but it's not the one that, or, uh, that originates right. the anomalous Hall yeah. effect. Yeah, yeah, it's like a big animal which has a little handle on top of it, but the animal itself exists no matter whether you put handle on it or not. <laughs> it's like a big elephant, and you from the little tail you move it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now we got okay. it. Exactly. Um, great. I don't think uh, if there are any further questions, uh, I don't see any from the audience. Uh, so I think uh, any anybody else? No. Uh, so I would like to thank the 140 of you that showed up between here and then Zoom and, and uh, in the, uh, in the uh, streaming. Let me stop the streaming now. Uh, da -da, we ended it. Sorry. And uh, um, thank uh, Helena once again 